In this clip, we'll learn how to use the MGO plugin in Mari to create a shading network in Maya when we're using Arnold 5 or later. Okay, so starting off here inside of Maya, I have upgraded my Arnold version. So just to show you, I am using the Maya to Arnold plugin 2.0.0.1, and I'm using the Arnold Core 5.0.0.2, which comes with this version of M2A. Now, there are some differences starting with the Arnold Core 5.0 that will affect you if you're using this MGO to Maya bridge or plugin. So let's go ahead first and start off back over inside of Mari. And again, we're going to go ahead and just quickly spit out our textures into that same directory and create a shading network over inside of Maya. So we'll go ahead and click that little arrow button and Mari will set about that and we can just in the meantime go ahead and jump back over into Maya and let's open up the Hypershade and hey, it's already finished. There's our same MGO AI standard matte shading network just as we saw in the previous video. Now here is where things should look a little different to you because the first thing you should notice is up here inside of our material library, um, there are a few materials that don't quite look right. And it just so happens that all of them are AI standard materials, including the one we just created. None of them have that nice, pretty shaded sphere. Instead, they have kind of this default icon. So what you should understand about the Arnold 5.0 core is that with this core they've actually changed what is called the standard shader inside of Arnold. Really the AI standard shader was an uber shader. It's a shader that was designed in such a way that it's meant for you to use it on the majority of the surfaces that you shade. There are a few special circumstances like hair and skin and some things like that prior to Arnold 5 that had their own shaders, but for the most part, you use this AI standard shader. Well, this shader is now considered legacy for Arnold 5.0 and beyond. The new shader that takes the place of this AI standard shader is actually called the AI standard surface. And if we look under here, under the shaders and surface, you'll find that right here. Let me just make this a bit larger. And there you go. So that is why these shaders have this strange icon up here inside of our material library is because they're being flagged. As a matter of fact, we've created this MGO AI standard. If we were to come over here and select a piece of our crab and try and right click and assign an existing material, the AI standard materials aren't even listed here. We can't even assign them to geometry inside of our scene. But the guys over at Solid Angle have thought about this and they've kind of created an upgrade path for you, so to speak. So really the only extra step you're going to need to take in a case like this is you'll need to select the AI standard shader right here. And there should be a convert to new shader button right here at the top. Now that convert to new shader button should convert that over to the new AI standard surface. And we could go ahead and take the name out some and change that to something like just MGO for now. Now we still need to handle all of the additional changes we made to the file nodes in the previous video. For things that don't affect color inside of our render, like specular roughness and normal, we need to change those from sRGB to raw, just like so. We'll come in here and switch those two file nodes over to raw. And I want to jump back over here to the MGO shader because remember when we brought over our AI standard from Mari into Maya, we had the box checked to remember the shader attributes. Remember the things that were not being driven by a texture. Well, if we start to scroll down here, we're going to start to see some custom attributes like a specular weight of 0.723, a specular color of kind of a dark gray. So you can see that not only did our custom attributes come over from Mari with the AI standard, but they were remembered when Arnold upgraded the AI standard to the AI standard surface. So everything should be good. 
Now we can come in here and go ahead and while we're at it, click on our checker mat and convert that to a new shader. Click on our backdrop and convert that to the new shader since this is basically the same file we used in the previous video. And there we go. We now have our shading network for our MGO shader. We can come over here and apply it just as we did in the previous video. And if we come in here and choose to render that particular shader, let me go ahead and get this drug over for you. What we should see is that Arnold will go ahead and render that out for us and it should look perfectly normal. So if we kind of zoom in on this guy and start to orbit and pan around, what we should see is a very close representation of what we saw over inside of Mari. Now it is important to remember if you're using Arnold Core 5 or later that this Arnold standard surface, this AI standard surface is a little bit different than the AI standard. So you may need to come in here and tweak a few of those attributes. Maybe the specular color needs to be adjusted. I'm not seeing enough of the specular highlights I don't feel like. Maybe some of the other custom attributes that we had created in our AI standard shader over in Mari need to be tweaked just a little bit here inside of Maya. But this is what the workflow for using this new version of Arnold with the MGO system is going to look like. As you can see, everything still works just fine. You can still pass your textures back and forth and you can still create a custom shading network. You'll just need to upgrade that shading network to the most recent version of that standard shader. Okay, great. So at this point, let's move on to our next video and learn how we can manually export textures out of Mari.